Hello all you nice people on the internet. I haven't made a video in a like in a really really long time. So I decided today to show you guys the status of my flight simulator. The flight simulator has moved from my garage at home to an hangar at my local airfield. This part you're looking at here, this is the front side of the flight simulator where you would enter the flight simulator and this uh, this square part is basically where the instructor station is uh, that is the hose for the air conditioning outlet um, if we move towards the back this this part is the simulator itself um, let me just stand back a bit there we go so that black part is the is where the simulator itself is okay so down here you're looking at the front side of the cockpit uh, which would be the nose of the air, of the airplane if you look in here there's the rudder pedals uh, the pilot side rudder pedals and uh, over there I just can turn the light. That's the co-pilot side. Um, this thing in the center with the springs, that's the mechanism for the yoke. I just adjust the light. There you can see that gear connects to the pilot side yoke with the shaft uh, and it's linked with the chain over there to the co-pilot side. Um, and there's a couple of springs which returns the yoke to the center. These springs are for the elevator control to center, centralize the elevator control. Uh, I just put the light down again. The rudder pedals are also linked to each other. So the pilot side is linked to the co-pilot side by, via these. Uh, threaded rods so if you move the pilot side pedals uh, the co-pilot side will also move I don't know if you can see that um, and it works by these linkages it's a bit difficult to show you the complete uh, system that I have going on here because the space is so small so basically the rods come from each of the pilot side pedals, goes to these uh, metal arms, changes direction uh, and goes to the co-pilot side. So that was the rudder pedals. Uh, the yoke, the way the yoke works is you have this uh, square tubing metal tube going up. It's attached over here to these two bearings uh, and it can move uh, forwards and backwards uh, on the side there's the uh, this thing is a 3d printed uh, gear or part of a gear and here we have the potentiometer that goes up to the uh, interface cards above um, so that's where the yoke gets its position from so if I uh, pull the yokes back that gear causes the potentiometer to turn um, and that gives the reading to the uh, simulator okay so if you turn the yokes to the left and to the right uh, it causes this chain to move which is the linkage between the two yokes it also has a potentiometer over there you can see the gears uh, over there and the potentiometer is attached to this gear and there's the cable going to the board. So if you rotate the yokes to the left or right, the same thing happens. It causes the potentiometer to turn and uh, that sends the position of the yoke. Uh, like I said, it's a dual yoke setup, so it's connected to the co-pilot side as well. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll just quickly show you all the electronics which is above, I don't know if you'll be able to see, it's a bit dark 
the layer that's the back side of the instrument panel here in the center that's the radio stack uh, this is the co-pilot side uh, instrument panel I have two I think it was 19 inch yes 19 inch uh, monitors which the instruments are displayed on so there you can see that's the pilot side monitor and there's the co-pilot side these interface boards that I used are uh, Leo Botner I think Leo Botner boards um, those are the main boards that I use for all of my switches and retentiometer interfaces they work quite well okay so down here again that's the cow flap operating mechanism um, which attached to this center console um, which basically just two toggle switches um, attached to two, two levers I'll show you that from the cockpit side um, later how that works okay so what you're looking at here is the inside part of the flight simulator enclosure um, here we have the uh, the cockpit shell of the of the flight simulator, um, and in front I have three um, 4K uh, TV screens, uh, LCD TV screens. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not able to run them in 4K resolution for the flight simulator. It's just too uh, too big of a resolution for my graphics card to handle. Um, so I'm running them at 1080p um, but it's still good enough. The television monitors are JVC monitors in case everybody anyone want, wanted to know that. Okay so this is the inside of the flight simulator as you would enter the door. Over here we have an, the instructor station. Um, the one monitor, this one is used as the instructor station. This is just the second monitor for the uh, for the uh, second PC because I'm running I'm running two PCs in order to uh, drive all of these screens. But yeah, that's that's instructor station. There we have a little shelf. Uh, this is a chair. The chair is on the rails, so it can move forward and back, and it can also turn around. There I have my portable air conditioning unit um, and there's just a light. Okay, so over here um, we have the two PCs. Um, this one this one is the main PC which drives the simulator as well as the three three displays in front to give you outside visuals. This one is the uh, second PC which drives the uh, uh, instruments, all the instruments for the flight simulator. The specs on these PCs are, um, if I can remember correctly, the main PC, this one, has a 1060 graphics card with uh, 6 gigabytes of memory um, for the graphics card, uh, as well as an i5 processor, I can't remember the speed. Um, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, the second PC has an GTX 750 graphics card, so it's not as powerful. Um, 8 gigabytes of RAM, also i5 processor, can't remember the speed. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, I just have a fan over here to keep the PCs cool uh, in the summer. Yeah, and one other thing I forgot to mention, the TV screens are 55 inch uh, 4K LCD TVs. Um, so yeah, if anyone wanted to know that. Okay, so I'm now sitting in the pilot side, in the pilot seat, sorry, uh, of the flight simulator. Um, the software I use for the for the gauges are a combination of uh, Sim Innovations Air Manager and uh, Sim Plugins uh, Panel Builder. So 
most of these gauges are uh, some plugins panel builder but the the attitude indicator um, and the radar altimeter are um, are uh, air manager gauges and that's because of the flight director you have on the attitude indicator you can't get um, this type of flight director on uh, some plugins gauges uh, so yeah also the radar altimeter I think looks better uh, with the air manager gauges um, oh also the the turn indicator is also air manager uh, uh, also is also a uh, air manager gauge um, the rest um, the airspeed gauge the um, HSI, the vertical speed altimeter, all the engine gauges uh, and temperature gauges down there, as well as the um, second uh, VOR and the ADF is also uh, are all um, some plugins uh, panel builder gauges. Uh, the radio, uh, sorry the co-pilot side gauges same thing most of them are some plugins gauges I think except for the again the attitude indicator um, and the uh, turn coordinator